Okay, I'm going to go over the basic setup for the manifolds and how I'm preparing it. I will give you pieces and information later on all the parts. I already have these assembled. Here's the final one. And as I already went over, yes, ignoring that glue job that got all over my fingers. This is a threaded, just like the rest of these already set up. But this half is a slip joint, which is similar, it's smooth. So I have this connected by a small piece of PVC in there, it just happens to be very short. And this is gonna clip onto this. The other half of the slip is going to be here, going out to your supply line. So now getting this part done here. This part is done, the, the inner circle is done based off of a threaded inside and outside union, okay, which I have here, okay, it is based off of a threaded inside union. Now here, and I know that this is going to seem backwards, why am I separating the two? Because I need the threaded here to go into the valve on this side. And, and then I need the threaded out. Come on, fingers. To go to the threaded out on this side. Hence, even though this was the same original coupling, that's why the second coupling that I had from the glued one, which I misplaced. But anyhow, the, the slip joint is going to lock here, and the other half of the slip joint is going to lock here. But to get these done, I'm going to do it in, do it in pieces. So I'm going to first start off with these nipples. These are one inch PVC nipples that are they're male to male. And it's a close nipple. You can get nipples that are this long and they have a big gap in between, but you know, I want this to be nice and tight. So I got what's considered a close nipple. One inch PVC. And what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna go ahead and get some Teflon tape here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover the threading. When you're covering the threading, you're always doing it in a clockwise direction of the threading. So I'm just going to lay that over a little bit, wrap it around. Again, I'm going clockwise. And the reason for the Teflon tape is to just help any slight imperfections from not stopping or from stopping the water to get through those gaps. It's to help fill in on the fly. And then I'm feeding it first into this end here. And you wanna make sure that you can do it finger tight. If you can't do this finger tight and you're cross threading it, you're done, stop. But as you can see, that slid in, no problem. Now I have to feed this one into the valve. So now even though I turn it around, I'm still going to Teflon tape it clockwise direction. Okay. So now, um, yep, I have my flow valve. The solenoid is to my right side here. So I'm going to feed this in. And if it's not if it's not going in easy, cross thread it, reverse it, and re-thread it again. But as you can see, I'm turning this with relative ease. And then it gets a little firmer as I'm getting closer. And as I'm doing it, sometimes this side will slip because this is getting tighter. Sometimes this will slip because this is getting tighter, which is what you want. You want a nice you want a nice firm grip. And then I'm just going to go ahead and at your own discretion. I'm just going to pipe wrench, tighten this just a little bit more because I have weak grip in my hands because of other issues. And I've got it that half finished up. 
now so I don't lose my gasket. And the gasket is the rubber gap here that when connected to the other side, you'll be able to see the pressure compresses against that to prevent water from shooting out. And we'll actually put a little grease on here to help, again, waterproof it that much more. And that compression is what prevents the water from going out once it's locked on to each other. So I don't lose that for right now. I'm just gonna take and slip this spare piece of wire through here. And again, the only purpose for this is just so that I'm not going to say, oh crap, where'd that gasket go? Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Threading clockwise direction as you're facing it. Then I'm going to finger thread it and make sure that it's not cross threaded and then get a little bit of a strength to it. And now the next half. So now I need to thread it here. So I'm gonna thread the second half of it and go to my second roll. Teflon tape is cheap. It's, you can get it like a 10 pack for eight dollars or something like that. Okay, now the tricky part on this side is I need to get the tightening ring on first. I'm sorry. I need to get the, yeah, the tightening rings on first. Now I can put the threaded part on. If you don't get that, you're never going to be able to lock this onto the other half. So the tightening ring has to be on first. Then we can go ahead with the threaded. And again, it's going on nice and easy because I can do it finger and it's not... And again, I'm just going to tighten it a little bit more because I don't have as strong a hands grip that I used to have. Okay. And we have our intersection complete. Yeah, that may have taken about five minutes or so as I'm talking about it. It's a little bit quicker when I'm not talking, but uh, now that is ready for the ultimate finished connection where you have the now slip joint version. And I would Teflon tape this one as well. Okay, there's your side coming in that side. And I've misplaced the other so I won't drag time, but that would connect into here and you've got your valve all set ready to go. These will eventually be glued in for your main line in succession for one zone, two zones, three zones. But I'm not gonna have all six zones all at the same place. I'm actually gonna separate mine out. I'll have a three zone and another three zone and you can just daisy chain the main line out. But these are the ones that are actually supplying the water to your zones within your irrigation system. Okay, so to get you up to speed of the pricing of this project, everything that I've done so far comes to a total of just under $700. Now, if you do shopping at Lowe's and have a they have a military discount that uh, saves some money, especially in the electronics, it's, it's a nice benefit to have. I still have to account for the PVC for actually running the main zones and the distribution between uh, the different sprinkler heads, but that in the scheme of things is much less. A 10 foot length of PVC is like $3. You may need you know, 30 or 40 of them depending on your yard, but at least this is something that you can wrap your head on.